Mintzberg coined the term machine bureaucracy to describe, if you like, the traditional organization where rules and processes and hierarchies dominate. And he also adopted Warren Bennis's term of ad hocracy to describe, if you like, the polar opposite, an organization where small groups come together flexibly to work on new problems and then disperse and reform in a new format to solve new problems. But in today's fast-moving competitive environment, where new technology can disrupt everything overnight, is ad hocracy enough? Perhaps a better model is one of constant flux, where the prevailing metaphor is one of an organism that is constantly growing and evolving. And that metaphor applies to what we call the Agile Organization. An Agile Organization can respond nimbly to sudden changes in the competitive environment, and it does so because its focus is almost entirely on customer needs. You will hear the word customer-centric banded around Agile Organizations almost constantly. As a result, Agile organizations are focused on creating highly customized products and services for their customers. As a result, Agile organizations can react quickly and successfully to new competitors, technological advances and sudden shifts in the competitive environment. To do this, Agile organizations need little central control. In character, they are anything but hierarchical. They tend to be networks of individual teams, each one with the autonomy to make its own decisions within an overall strategy or mission or vision or set of values. Instead of working to define complete solutions to well-formed problems, Agile organizations set their teams the task of making incremental progress. In each time period, the team needs to produce a new solution which is better than the last. It doesn't need to be perfect, which means that if the external environment changes, if a new competitor emerges or a new product emerges, the team can rapidly change direction because it hasn't committed to an end product or service. The key words for agile organizations are iterative and incremental. We make changes that are incremental, small steps that take us in the right direction, and we constantly reevaluate them, cycling back if we recognize that the direction we moved in is no longer correct. At the end of each increment, we can then reevaluate our position and decide upon the next step. Team leadership is often dispersed among the team, but if it's concentrated in one individual, then the prevailing leadership model is one of servant leadership. And we've done a video on that so you can understand it. When the team reaches a natural pausing place or an end to what it's doing, individual team members may be free to move on to another team and for new team members to join to reinvigorate and refresh the team as it moves to the next stage of its investigation of its problem solving or its product or service development. The cycles teams work to are typically two weeks, but they can be anything from a week to two or three months. But crucially, within agile organizations, there is no commitment to huge long-term projects that span a number of years. If there is a need for a long-term project, then it is still defined in terms of a series of jumps. And at the end of each jump, the organization, the teams themselves, will evaluate what's been achieved and evaluate the cost benefit of making the next jump. An agile organization is always particularly ready to scrap what it is doing and refocus its attention where it needs to. 
whereas more traditional organisations are far slower to recognise that the progress they have made is no longer in the right direction. Therefore, we quite often see in other, less agile organisations what is known as the sunk cost fallacy. The fallacy says that we have put so much effort, so much time, so much cost, so much commitment into what we're doing that we need to carry on. Agile organisations are not prey to the sunk cost fallacy. All of this makes the organisation very flexible, very agile in its ability to respond to threats and to opportunities. All that matters to individual teams is to move the organisation forward step by step so that it is in a better place today than it was when it started. Embedded within agile organisations are many others of the organisational structures that appear in this course. Structures like the Triple I Company, Adhocracy, Holacracy, and the Federal Structure. And of course, many agile organisations are also learning organisations. As a result, what we observe in agile organisations are things like constant learning, a complete customer focus, professional competence and pride, informality and a collegial sense of working together to achieve an end, and high degrees of transparency that create lower degrees of political manoeuvring. If organisations can get their transition to becoming agile organisations right, then there are huge benefits to be had. But don't get me wrong, this is not going to be easy. Very few organisations have so far made a successful transition. It is hard. But for the right organisation, it is exceptionally worthwhile. Please do give us a thumbs up if you like this video. There's loads more great management courses content to come, so please do subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of it. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, and in the meantime, keep learning.